Remember your true name? We shouldn't stay here. If you don't have other plans, how about leaving with us for now? Oh, that's great! Let's go together! from the fight? This is the statue of Jue, the sentinel in Zhenzhou, in the shape of a long. There is one capital and six cities in Huanglong, with each city having its own sentinel. While they share some similarities in appearance, there are also differences. standing face to face with our sentinel? One can hardly see our sentinel with their own eyes. Most people only get the chance during the appointment ceremonies. According to your description, you stood pretty close. Only the sentinel's appointed resonator is allowed in its proximity. For now, that person is the magistrate of Zhenzhou. be an elite class! Oh, yeah. Chisya might be in danger. Rover, please. One 
adventure out of the gorge, there's only a short walk to reach Jinjo. Jinjo is the safest place around here. The Resonance Nexus provides coverage for the whole city. Besides, we've got a protective barrier and strong fortifications. <laughs> Maybe it's not as big as some other cities, but Jinjo is always the best place in my heart. Jinjo sits between the Deseret Highland and the Norfolk Barrens. It's a border city and a fortress. It's very crucial to the safety of Huanglong. Huh? We've agreed to meet up with Baijia here. Where is she? This is the center of the Atheric Sea. Field? When did it show up? It wasn't here when we just got here. But I didn't sense a hint of a tacit field's presence. So it appeared while we weren't looking? Like in the blink of an eye? Or maybe the etheric sea can tell where we are. Could it be following us? The center of the tacit field. Baija? Baija! Baija! We're too far away. Perhaps she can't hear us. We agreed to meet up around here and she said she was off to collect some samples. Gosh, did she really go straight into the heart of a tacit field for that? Baija wouldn't take such risks without careful consideration. Freshly formed tacit fields go through a dormant period. The faster a tacit field forms, the longer its dormant period lasts. For now, this tacit field should be safe. Right. The glider can't carry us beyond the tacit field's range. Besides, Baija is there. We'll have to go down and see what is going on. Why did you come here by yourself? Baisha, you know we... Huh? You are alright, it seems. Yeah, he was super energetic. Handled a super big TD. Way more spirited than me. I've been keeping an eye on his condition through the street. It isn't. Baija is just concerned about your condition. She must think we shouldn't be letting you move around that much, since you've just regained consciousness. This isn't the place we're talking. Let's go. No hesitation. 
Let me be your blade. Tempest! Precipitant! device every resonator has, developed by researchers in Guanglong. But you see, it's not always we get to find these. Also, there's a limit to what your gourd can absorb. Absorption is only possible when your data bank's level is equal to or higher than the tacit discord's level. The terminal can then convert its reverberation into an echo for use in battle. My terminal issued a warning when it detected that tacit discord earlier. It should at least be an Overlord class. Rover, would you mind checking your data bank level? No need for that. Rover, why don't you just try absorbing it with your terminal? Oh, so it doesn't work. It won't take long before the reverberations disappear and the etheric sea vanishes. Once that happens, the resonance beacon signals will come back. The tacit field will dissipate, biding time for its next resurgence. We'll need to report the unusual phenomena here to the city hall and the academy. Let's make our exit.
What? What kind of power is that? Rover, you... You've been playing the fool all along? I've never seen a resonance ability quite like this. You got any other tricks up your sleeve? Like eating a whole tacit discord? Grilling echoes alive? Could it be related to your lost memories? Can you recall anything now? Rover, are you feeling all right? Any discomfort? Could it be the side effect of fighting that tacit discord? Daiji, can we take Rover to do a checkup at Huashu Academy's Resonance Medical Department? Hmm. Daiji? Absorbing echoes with the human body is not entirely unprecedented. With the human body? I remember Comprehensive Mirror for Historians mentioned this in the Huanglong section's opening. A celestial being descended, commanding the Tiankun's boundless power. Assuming mortal form, they condensed the primordial essence, creating Pangu. Cleaving heaven and earth apart, they aligned the celestial and terrestrial. Their radiance encompassed the four corners, Thus began the illustrious annals of Huanglong. As pro that's where the names Pangu Terminal and Tiangun Data Bank come from. Whether it's true or not, that story happened a long time ago, when Jinjo didn't even exist. Could it be that Rover is like the great, 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 great granddaddy of us all? Let's not jump to conclusions without enough data and proper analysis. Rover. Wait! The signal's back! Holographic message to all of Genjo from the city hall. My fellow soldiers and citizens, I apologize for any inconvenience caused. I am Jin Shi, the magistrate of Jinjo. As the moon chasing festival approaches, our city welcomes visitors from around the world. The festivities are highly anticipated by our people. And I too share in this joyful sentiment. Jingzhou has always been a crucial defense against the tacit discord outbreaks, safeguarding Huanglong. We have a heavy responsibility in our shoulders with no room for retreat or failure. It is the dedication of our warriors, along with the diligence of our citizens, that has allowed us to thrive in peace and prosperity. Despite the challenges of tacit discords, we remain steadfast and hospitable to visitors, upholding our enduring traditions. With that in mind, I have a favor to ask. Among our many visitors, there is one visitor that holds utmost importance to me, the city of Jinzhou, and the entirety of Huang Long. We have awaited your arrival for a long time. Given the circumstances, you may be feeling bewildered at this time. You should have noticed some strange happenings related to you. If you plan to stay in Jinjo for some time, I would be more than delighted to personally meet you in the city hall of Jinjo. While I cannot guarantee to provide all the answers you need, I will do my best to assist you and provide necessary permissions, if applicable. This is only my personal request. You can decide your course of action in any way you see fit. Therefore, I request the people and soldiers of Jinjo 
to assist this esteemed visitor when the opportunity arises. Why do I get this feeling? This person our Magistrate was talking about... ...as Rover. The Moon Chasing Festival and the Spring Long Festival are their liveliest times in Huanglong. They're two of our most famous traditional festivals. Every region in Huanglong will be celebrating the festivals in their unique ways. Zhenzhou is a city built on the borders, but it's no exception in that regard. Hey, that ain't the point, okay? What are your plans now, Rover? There's still a while before the festival break. The best part of it hasn't even started. If you're eagerly anticipating the festival atmosphere now, I'm afraid you will end up disappointed. But if you can stay in Jinjo for a little while longer, until the moon chasing festival activities begin, I remember you had a flashback of yourself looking into its eyes when you saw the statue of our sentinel. We can't confirm its authenticity, but based on the Magistrate's message, it seems Chen Zhou has a lot to do with your past. Whether you were the visitor our Magistrate mentioned or not, you are surely important to Chen Zhou, and you will be our important... Friend! We've already entrusted our lives to each other. I've never seen so many TDs packed together, and that elite one was so scary. Well, you did get rid of most of them. <laughs> anyway, once we're back in Jinjo, I'll treat you that famous specialty from Pan Wa's restaurant. There you are. My dearest. Seed of fate.
pleased to make your acquaintance. I apologize for the delay. My name is San Hua, the bodyguard of Madame Magistrate. I regret to inform you that Madame Magistrate is currently away. Prior to her departure, she instructed me to bring you these tokens and a welcome gift. Madame Magistrate advised you to explore what these tokens represent during her absence. This may help you acquire the information you desire sooner. I apologize for the inconvenience, but please rest assured she will be here to meet you in three days' time. Since Madame Magistrate is currently away, I cannot make the final confirmation on her behalf. But you, you are truly exceptional. Regarding that, my eyes can see the frequencies of all living beings. Or rather, those frequencies are the only thing I can see. You. You share the same frequency with Madame Magistrate. You look undistorted and authentic in your original form. In my eyes, you appear the way you are. They all look different. Back to the same spot again. And this moon. What is happening? Are those tacit discords? Still remember what you saw? Can you give us some more details? An enormous moon looming above you. Now, this reminds me of the unusual sightings that supposedly happened during a past war. This is the first time we've run into anything like this since we put the training ground into use. The Sonorosphere captures everything that once happened in a specific time and place, be it good or bad. We built this simulated training ground after the structure of Sonorospheres. Our goal was to extract pure remnant energy with the simulated Sonorosphere. But we cannot guarantee that all abnormal frequencies were eliminated. Your arrival may have revived the remnant energy. I suspect such an all- I'm afraid I'll also- In terms of but, if you feel anything- Here's your sundial. Intact as it was. Mr. Mortify, can we have the test results? Simply put, it's hollow. Here, try tapping on it. It sounds different from a solid object. It's not just a timekeeping tool. It's an intricate mortise and tenon puzzle box. This sundial is hollow with an inner compartment. We scan it, and there is a small paper scroll inside. However, it's missing a crucial component. We should be able to spin the wheels on the sundial once the right component is installed. I have some basic knowledge 
But there is someone else who is more knowledgeable in automata mechanics than I am. It wouldn't have taken me this long if we were dealing with tacitite weapons. Install the missing part, then rotate the wheels to their correct positions, and you should be able to solve the puzzle and access the paper scroll. However, I still have no idea what the missing component should look like. Well, that's a no-brainer indeed. We could certainly give it a try. If you're fine with the paper scroll being destroyed by its protective mechanism, that is. Uh, one moment. I have an incoming call. Hmm. What is it? You certainly are well informed. It's indeed beautiful data. Good taste. Well, since you've put it that way... Prover, Mr. Mortify's expression seems to have softened, don't you think? An amiable person, isn't he? We haven't even asked him to help us with assembling. It looks like Mr. Mortify needs more time. Maybe we should give him some space to concentrate. Rover, let's come back later, shall we? Hmm. Yes, of course. I've already noticed all that you mentioned. Indeed, you just pointed out a blind spot in my thinking. Your workshop? That hellish place? <laughs> Stop sweet-talking me. I get it. <laughs> Sorry for keeping you waiting. Let's get back to the sundial. It's a mortise and tenon based puzzle box. The missing component in the middle needs to fulfill two entirely different structural requirements at the same time. Considering its entire structure, this component needs an odd. Mr. Mortify? We found the parts. Good. Bring it to me. The test results are in. The mangosteen is just an ordinary fruit. It's suitable for regular consumption. We found nothing unusual about it. From the purple leaf you presented, I detected subtle fluctuations in tacit discord's frequency from two distinct sources, but they were overlapping and difficult to distinguish. This is a rare occurrence. The scattered nature of these fluctuations rules out the possibility of them being left behind through contact. This is not an ordinary leaf, but it doesn't seem to be a tacit discord either. Based on the data we gathered, I believe it was sampled from an area struck with the wave-worn phenomena. Yes, the anomalies that occurred after the lament including the formation of tacit fields, etheric sea, retroact rain, and gravity loss. These are collectively called the wave-worn phenomena. And the lament was the start of it all. As for the sugar pearl, it has been determined to be a type of oral vaccine. This sugar pearl expired over 20 years ago. The low temperature storage life for this vaccine is about two years. A 20-year-old vaccine. Hmm. Could it be related to the children's epidemic in Zhenzhou two decades ago? The archives in the academy should have information on the sugar pearl. The archives here are organized in a unique way. You can start by searching the keywords at the lobby terminal. The missing pointer has been installed, and now the sundial should be complete. So, the discs are rotatable now? Yes. Align the correct markers with the pointer we just installed, and then you should be able to open it. Hold on. 
remember when I said, don't force it open. Crank that thing another five degrees, and not even Zhang Li Yao will be able to save it. The earthly branches and four symbols. These symbols are related to the sexagenary cycle. It's an intricate way of recording time in Huanglong. Nowadays, it is mainly reserved for calendars, numerology, and indexing. But it's falling out of daily use now. What kind of information could it represent? It's the filing system. Most of Huang Long's libraries and databases still use this method to organize their archives, namely the Grand Libraries. The Academy's public archives are organized in this manner too. Access pass is required if you're heading to the Norfall Barrens. That place is now off limits. <clears throat> what is your business, young lady? It's my third shift and you're still here. Oh, uh, you must be the soldier on duty at noon yesterday. Nice to see you again. I'm a resonator and a trained martial artist. I can handle myself. Please. I need to go look for someone. I've promised the missing man's grandfather to bring him back. Would you let me through? Be that as it may, I cannot let you, given the current circumstances. My apologies. Well, everything seems fine in the city. Are things really that bad on the front lines? That's why we must stay vigilant, so people in the city can go on peacefully with their lives. Besides, General Jian is currently there at the Norfall Baron's base. Dangerous as it is, he will keep an eye on every soldier, including the one you're looking for. We have already sent a report on your case. You could just go home and wait for the good news. What's the point of staying here? Uh, thank you, but I have already asked the patrol station for help and tried every method I could think of. Please let me through. I promised him, so I gotta give it my all. I understand your concern. I don't want to be a bother. Would it help if I hid my presence and stayed somewhere further away? How about five miles? Or maybe a hundred? Well, a thousand might be too far, though. I wouldn't be able to see you clearly. <laughs> Listen, nobody knows when the soldiers will return, and even if they do, you might not find the one you seek. It's a dangerous road ahead if you want to reach the front lines, and you don't even have an access pass. <clears throat> Your access pass has been verified. Just you two? Thank you for your help. I really appreciate it. I intend to leave the city with them, and they have agreed. Will it be an issue for you? I, uh... Well, it says you have the highest level of access. So, no procedural issues here. Honestly. He could lead an entire troop out of the city with that access pass, and no one would question it. Sure. Master Tianxing, 
Have you found the person you're looking for? Yes, I found Zhuyan. We will return to the city with the logistics team. We will go find Mr. Zhongye to let him know he is safe. I heard you two still have other matters to attend to. When you have the time, let's catch up at Liu Xian Tea House. It's my great pleasure to have met you. The leaf showed residual fluctuations of tacit discords. Those fluctuations pointed to a certain set of coordinates. And that is... Tsichu Village and the Central Plains. Watch out! attack us. Brother. Help. Help. Wait. It doesn't look like it's trying to attack us. Help. 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 Brother. 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 repeat these lines. This is not a common tacit discord. Tacit discords attack other living beings because they need to feed on those frequencies to make themselves whole again. When frequencies are scattered and recombined, a new tacit discord is born. This one probably devoured the frequencies of humans turning the last bits of a human's consciousness into such monotonous mumbles are these words the last cries of someone innocent who is behind this twisted plot You won't need my self-introduction. Oh, I spent.
If you need to hear it from me, then yes, I am Scar. Cruel and twisted maniac. We deserve a meeting free of such disturbances, don't you agree? The girl, she's gonna sway your judgment. Don't worry, I don't plan to make you hate me just yet. She is safe now. Well, let's just enjoy our time together for the moment. Forget about that irrelevant person, will you? I have a lot to share with you. To begin with, I heard you've lost your memories. So, it's true. That makes sense, given how fragile you were when you woke up, or I would have questioned the authenticity of those rumors. you noticed. Oh, I am flattered. No need to be so on edge. By now, you should have realized I'm just one of the onlookers. But out of all the onlookers, I'm the only one who came forward to meet you with absolute honesty. Before you knew anything about this world, you were already the center of conflict. You are the unknown variable we've been waiting for. Forces have been fighting for possession over you. From the moment you opened your eyes, everyone you've met, including that girl you care so much about, they all knew how valuable you are. The world is a cruel place. You are a living, breathing person, but you're just a pawn to many. That's why I'm here, because I see you as a dear friend, and I want to tell you the truth. I am so, so sorry for everything you're about to face. But truth hurts sometimes. say I'm looking forward to your choice. My goal is simple. I just want to deepen our mutual understanding, nothing more. Come on. Observe the surroundings a little more and tell me what you see. As you learn more about this world, your true desires will surface, and our little game will become even more entertaining. And before that, I don't want anyone to disturb my precious alone time with you. That's all. Ah, oh, why do you have to assume we are the culprits? Maybe you should be asking me what actually happened here. I won't tell you everything just yet. That's too boring. As I said, why don't you take a look around and see for yourself? So go ahead. What do you see? Bravo! Didn't think you'd catch on to that. Now, what is the conclusion you've drawn? I see you don't really trust those villagers. Ah, so they were right about you. You are indeed quite exceptional. I like it. Your keen observation, precise judgment, and accurate understanding of human nature. Let me give you a couple more tips. The truth is far more complicated than you think. 
First, who are the players in our tale? An innocent girl, a revered leader, and a flock of simple villagers. Next, what makes up our main plot? False devotion, fleeting kindness, collective deceit, senseless killings, and the one vulnerable soul pushed onto a path of destruction by the masses. Now, Rover, the story is yours to spin. I'm eager to hear your version after you've learned more. Our story begins here. Once upon a time in a peaceful village lived a flock of carefree lambs. In the day, they toiled for food. And when evening fell, they sought refuge from the looming threat of wolves. Fables, stories told and retold through the ages. The ancient art of conveying hidden truths through fiction. But they always draw from real life, don't they? The same story gets told by many, and each person brings their own spin, their own focus. Whatever you learn from it is just one of countless different interpretations, like us now, caught in a carefully crafted plotline, a scheme I had no hand in. This village marks the beginning of my story with Jinjo. <laughs> So that magistrate led you here to meet me. Ha! <sighs> Such a clever move on her part. One day, a shepherd visited the village. The shepherd brought them promises of abundance and protection. The lambs, drawn in by his words, soon lived in comfort and security. No, nope. quite the opposite. The shepherd's arrival is only the beginning. With a wave of his hand, the shepherd could grant their every wish. His flock obeyed, bowing their heads, pleading for better food and shelter. They no longer had to struggle for survival, as their once meager lives were replaced with endless luxury. The flock worshipped their shepherd-turned-god, praising him and holding him in the highest regard. What's wrong? Does my story make you uncomfortable? Imagine you were one of those lambs, facing irresistible temptation and pressure from your peers. Wouldn't you bow down and beg for food from your master? Oh, so we agree already. You are right, but the world we live in falls short of our ideals. The shepherd still reigns, and the lambs have grown complacent. It's up to the two of us to make that ideal world a reality. The lambs reveled in endless bonfire parties, celebrating their new god every night, except the one little black lamb. As each night passed, it was the only one to notice how its flock was dwindling away. Rover, do you think someone would give you what you want without taking anything from you? Mm. <laughs> I once believed that too. Thought as long as I paid a high enough price, I could get my desired outcome. But true equality is scarce, always has been. The world was never a fair place, wouldn't you agree? To receive equal retribution, one must give more and more and more. When every wish comes with a hefty price, people weigh their options carefully when they can make someone else bear the price. They all rush to make more wishes. 
they don't consider they too may one day pay for another selfish desire. Funny, isn't it? Later, the shepherd openly blamed the black lamb for the flock's decline. On the next day, the white lambs welcomed the rising sun as usual. But the black lamb was nowhere to be found. The shepherd introduced an unspoken rule to this village. One that our black lamb violated by telling the truth. Suddenly, the once doting God stopped fulfilling wishes because no more sacrifices were being made. After witnessing the black lamb's actions and hearing from their almighty shepherd, what do you suppose the white lambs did? Ah, those oblivious lambs. Little did they know the most fearsome demon was right under their noses. Well done. You didn't let any detail slip. Now, I wonder, what is your takeaway from this story? Answer me and I'll reveal the truth of what happened. Who was the real culprit behind the diminishing number of lambs? Brilliant answer! You saw past the obvious. The true culprit was not the shepherd, but the white lambs who chose to follow his rules. The shepherd never forced them into anything. He merely presented a choice, a possibility. No one would have been killed if they simply refrained from making those wishes. Their greed and indifference were the cause of it all. Now, my second question. What price did the lambs pay for their wishes? They must have poured their sincerity into it, no doubt. But that's not much of a price, is it? Here's my final question. What happened to the black lamb? Ah, 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 ah. Don't rush, Rover. Take your time. What is the truth you've uncovered? Shepherd was granting wishes by sacrificing the lives of lambs. The flock never found out about it. They were deceived to believe the black lamb was the culprit. Almost there, Rover. Little lambs cowered and huddled in their village, terrified of the relentless wolf packs. Until a shepherd arrived bearing the gift of wishes and providing shelter and sustenance. Slowly, the shepherd gained control over the flock and the lambs lived contented lives. But this is not the end of our story. The shepherd found the solitary black lamb in his flock and offered to grant any wish it desired. In exchange, he wanted one of its companions as a sacrifice. The black lamb refused, and it was shunned by its flock, left without shelter or sustenance. After the black lamb's exile, more lambs continued to vanish. The shepherd then blamed the black lamb for breaking the rules and withheld his wish-granting power as punishment. From the very beginning, the lambs knew the risk of making wishes. They too could become sacrifices for those of others. But they always believed it wouldn't be them. 
Meanwhile, some lambs reasoned that since they had already risked being sacrificed for someone else's wish, it was then only fair to pass on that risk for a chance at fulfilling their own desires. And so they continued to play the game. They all knew the consequences, but chose to remain silent. Fearful, yet greedy, they followed the shepherd's orders and made wishes again and again. Until one day, a brave black lamb spoke up, shattering the flock's facade, their illusion of a peaceful and happy life. my story, Rover. What really happened here, I suppose you already have it figured out? The black lamb who rebelled against the rules, and the white lambs who succumbed to their greed. The innocent maiden sacrificed, and the villagers who turned on each other in a ruthless frenzy. They had it coming. All the shepherd had to do was execute the rebel. That's how he kept the flock in check and maintained the status quo. Fun answer, but no, not even close. I was never the shepherd, never will be. You and I, we are the black lamb, the one who breaks the rules. <laughs> Interesting, Rover. <laughs> I'm liking you more and more. Well then, let's see if this black lamb is going to end up like you say. Welcome to the realm of endless chaos. Now is your time to think, Rover. What is the right path to take? Oh, you found us already. Shake and shiver, blink an eye. A flock of lambs comes passing by. Face of white, black, and red. Watch out, my dear. Your pioneers are lying at your feet. Don't look back. Join them on this right path. Uh uh uh. Don't rush. One slip, and you'll shatter to pieces. Brutality! <laughs> Can't you see? We are kindred spirits after all. Shh, 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 don't be so quick to deny it. Now that I have you here standing before me, I'd love to hear your answers. Tell me. Do you want to be the rule-setting shepherd or the rule-breaking black lad? If a sitting person manages to survive in a realm of lunatics, would you call them the last one of reason? Or the sole apostle? Think about it! The shepherd is not the preordained embodiment of truth. Once he is gone for good, the black lad can reclaim the trust it's heard, then eventually there will be none left to be victims or oppressors! 
I shattered Scar's illusion. That should have injured him. Oh! Should I thank you for showing me mercy? Stay away from him! Didn't you promise to leave me some alone time with Rover? With one condition. I do hope you haven't let that slip from your mind. Don't let your improvisation trouble others. <sighs> Look at you, rushing in to protect your precious, perfect movement. No worries. I know all the do's and don'ts. I don't need you to tell me what to do. Rover, it seems our happy little date must come to an end. But don't forget my sincere reminders. Let me know what you choose. An unexpected gift? An honest and open exchange? Or a highly risky gamble? The choice is yours. I know how smart you are. You won't make a hasty decision. We'll meet again in the not too distant future. They're gone. Should we go after them? Scar's resonance abilities appear to involve teleportation and the manipulation of space. He trapped me in confinement and I could only sense that it wasn't far from here. It took me some time to break that barrier. Sorry, Rover. If only I could have reached you sooner. Brother. Brother. Huh? Why are you here, little one? never seen any tacit discord display such vivid emotions. The brother had mentioned. Could it be? Yes, that is a possibility. Since Scar had been here before, let's talk about it later. Rover, can you fill me in on what happened? All the tragedies in Tiji Village were linked to that ritual. Making up stories based on real life to support his twisted beliefs? That does sound like something he might do. We cannot take his words for granted. Now, we must locate where the ritual took place and see for ourselves. Assured. As you anticipated, Scar did not try to kill them. Yes, I stayed out of it like you asked. Is everything all right on your end? Please be sure to stay safe, my lady. That tree... It's stunning. It's almost eerily enchanting. about something hidden here? That girl just wanted to save her village. But those sacrifices 
Jesus didn't lead to redemption. I guess the tacit discord we saw stayed here to convey her last wishes. Please excuse me. It's getting a bit too cold here. Can we head back now? So, Rover, you gonna try it now? Symbols on the larger disk represent time. And we need to align the correct symbol with this pointer. It should be... It's working. And now? Symbols on the smaller disk represent direction. And we need to align the correct symbol with this pointer. It should be... We have Teal Long of the East. White Tiger of the West. Vermilion Bird of the South. And Black Tortoise of the North. According to the clues we've gathered, it should be... Wow, you really solved it! Wait, I don't think it's something we're allowed to see. Quick, Yang Yang! We should turn around! Maybe you should read it first, Rover? Libraries in Huanglong are renowned for their vast databases, holding valuable information about the regions they represent. Their exact locations are kept confidential, but it is believed they hold answers to all questions one could ask. The Grand Libraries are vital for Huanglong's data security, managed by the regional sentinels, accessible only to the magistrates. They're rarely open to the public. Kind of like a big piggy bank inside the city hall, data-wise. Yes, you'll find the most comprehensive and accurate information there. Rover, if you need to visit the Grand Library in Jinjo to find out who you are, I think it suggests two things. First, there is a strong link between your past and Jinjo's history. Second, you must be a really significant person. So you're super important to Jin Zhou, maybe even all of Wang Long. Wow, I think we stumbled upon a real big shot when we didn't even know it. What's the matter, Rover? Something wrong with a sundial? It is Jinjo's political center, and it's also located at the city center, if that's what you mean. The city hall was built when Jinjo was established. It's a popular landmark for locals giving directions. Why do you ask, Rover? See, what did I say? Covert ops. Real confidential stuff going on. Mm. Come on, Yang Yang. It's just a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Madam Magistrate. What's the worst that could happen? Relax, relax. I guess you're right. Still, please be careful. We'll be waiting for you.
Thank you for leading the way, Rover. What a magnificent place to set foot in. Extensive, exhaustive. Oh, how I want to carve the place inside out and blow it all to shreds. Huh. Thought you'd seem a bit more surprised. I wonder why. Say you've laid a trap for me. Interesting. Do you really think you can trap me here? You will not escape. What a shame I can't stay and play with you a bit longer. Till we meet again, dear friends. You're not going anywhere. I was following you all along, huh? My Elysium only breaks under coordinated attacks from both sides. I can never get rid of all these pesky little helpers around you, can I? So you've joined hands against me with Miss Magistrate here. It does hurt my feelings, you know? You're always so, so popular. Are you all right, Rover? Of course he is. How could I ever have the heart to hurt him? Consider my moment of failure a gift of sincerity, Rover. I trust you haven't forgotten our conversation earlier. Choose me. I'll tell you everything you want. Huh. I see. So she made the move before I could, and told you all of it already. Then as the winners, would you be so kind as to tell me how you set me up? Now I have retrieved the Magistrate's message for me from the puzzle box. But it only points me to the Grand Library. There's no meeting time. Something is... I've solved the puzzle. The discs have been rotated, and the two symbols are now glowing. With this glowing light, a shadow is cast onto two other symbols. The Black Tortoise of the North, north to the City Hall. And the time reads, the Shichin of Cho and the wee hours of the morning. Three days. We both made it on time. Allow me to formally introduce myself. I am Jinshi. It brings me great joy to see you, Rover. An emergency forced me to leave, and I only had the time to prepare some tokens for you. Please pardon my lack of hospitality.
Yes. The Sentinel of Jinjo is currently absent. Correct. The Sentinel's guide and guard humanity is a symbol of our civilization. When a region's Sentinel goes absent, chaos is bound to ensue. As this news could lead to civil unrest, please keep it a secret. Jinjo's Sentinel Jue is being held captive by the Fraxidus. I had to postpone our meeting and put all my effort into finding its whereabouts. Yes, our thoughts are connected, to a certain degree. I can sense his memories, feelings, and surroundings, though not very clearly. Unfortunately, I haven't. I can feel Jue is in danger. The good news is, I have figured out the culprit behind all of this. Precisely. The Fraxidus plans to advance another lament and cause disasters worldwide. Overseer Scar had several objectives upon infiltrating Jinjo. To track you down, to test your strengths, and to make you join their cause. To abduct Jue and to resurrect the Thrinodian in advance. They must have discovered your value, likely from one of Jue's prophecies. If you join them, they'll gain significant power. Should you refuse to join, the Fraxidus will likely want to eliminate you so you don't get in their way. I have a plan to apprehend Scar. Once we capture him, the Fraxidus won't be that much of a threat to you for the time being. If you are willing to lend us a hand, I will ensure your safety during our cooperation. Of course, your decision is valued, Rover. Speaking of which, you seem to have already gathered a lot from the tokens. Impressive, Rover. The threat Jinjo is facing is far worse than meets the eye. One of the Thrinodians will soon be reawakened. They are the enemies of human civilizations, born from the dark side of our collective consciousness. We must defeat them to protect all of humanity. We have been doing our best to prevent the disaster. But the Fraxidus is accelerating the Thrinodian's revival. Indeed. You have defeated the Crownless and absorbed its echo with your bare hands. It is the tacit discord that embodies the concept of warfare. Resentment of the Fallen, fright of the ignoble, those are the emotions that lay ground for its birth. The Crownless is a tacit discord that possesses powers from the reviving Trinodian. Jinjo is a border city with an unbreakable will and a strong spirit of resistance. However, we also fear the constant wars and loss of life, and the Trinodian can prey on that. You, however, you were able to defeat and absorb a Trinodian-related tacit discord with your bare hands and resonate with other TDs. Meanwhile, Huang Long's records mention a hero with similar powers who saved our nation during the Thrinodian War. He is mentioned in literature dating back to Jinjo's establishment. To uncover your true identity, this could be a helpful lead to pursue. Yes, based on my own deduction and the prophecies of Jue. You mean... the unfinished statue of Jue? I see. Do you mind letting me know what you remembered? 
Since it's related to our sentinel, I might be able to help. Rover, the memories of which you speak... As I mentioned earlier, I can resonate with Jue, our sentinel. Your recollections... They align with what I've witnessed in Jue's memories. Yes, I do remember seeing something similar. I believe it had truly happened in the past. In other words, you may be the person mentioned in our records. The unwavering presence by our sentinel's side bonded by an unbreakable trust. Resonators tend to live a longer lifespan, but it is indeed unprecedented to live hundreds of years without any sign of aging. So many mysteries about you remain unsolved, and your age is just one of the unknowns. But I don't know. Jue's last piece of information pointed to the Northfall Barrens, where you should find the Thranodian. I pray you will find your answers there. A Thranodian is resurrecting, and our nation is in grave danger. This reminds me of the Thranodian War all too much. Perhaps this has something to do with your mysterious appearance in Jinjo. Not really. I don't plan to believe in a hero showing up out of nowhere and protecting us. I am just presenting whatever lead I have about your past, as I know it is troubling you. I want to help you, and that is all there is to it. Thank you for considering lending us a hand. Your help is much appreciated. But please, do not feel obligated because of the information I shared. They are my people, and the responsibility to keep them safe should fall on no one else but my own shoulders. I am saying this because I have faith in my abilities, and even more so in the bravery of Jinjo soldiers and our people. You deserve to make your own decision about this after uncovering your true identity. I appreciate everything you've done for us during the past few days, and perhaps even longer ago. Once it all settles, I am ready to accommodate and assist in whatever future decision you make. You can leave Jinjo, or the entire Huanglong if you wish. If you ever need me again, you need only ask. Let's keep this a secret between the two of us. How does that sound? Scar. You are now under arrest for committing multiple felonies in Huanglong. Do you have anything to say? What do I want to say, huh? While I'd love to tell you another story, I guess that's not what you want to hear. Let's cut to the chase, Madam Magistrate. I'm getting bored already. Very well. You will answer only our questions from now on. Sure, why not? What do you want to know? The Thranodians. They hold the key to our ideal. Together, they will bring us the promised true lament, and we will embrace the new world that is bound to come. Sure, why not? What do you want to know? A sentinel such as Jue can predict and correct future events. It gets in our way of achieving our sublime vision. We merely wanted to topple the set future built on lies 
and take control of our own destiny. Sure, why not? What do you want to know? What is the lament? Disaster? Curse? Some kind of punishment? <laughs> People only see the surface. The lament brings death, destruction, and countless reverberations. Reverberations that will be reflected, overlapped, and interwoven during the lament. They will be our salvation. The only path to a new life form and a new civilization. Sure, why not? What do you want to know? Our goal has always been the same. We want you. Want you to join us. Forces battle over you, causing all this strife. And yet you remain unaware of your own worth. Are you really that naive? Or are you just dense? Whatever. Our interest in you is not affected by such trivial matters. Sure, why not? What do you want to know? You kidnapped Jue, and revived the Thrinodian, accelerating the next lament. This is proof enough that you are the enemy of Jinjo, and all humanity. Stop dreaming you can force Rover to join you. He is our honored guest, and I will not allow any harm to come his way. <laughs> How confident you sound! As the Thranodian's resurrection approaches, Jinjo is barely holding on. How much longer do you think you can keep up this facade? Thank you for your concern. We have crushed your schemes once, and we can do it again. I have one last question for you. Abducting Jue, stalking Rover, and setting up an ambush in Chicha Village, you couldn't have accomplished that all on your own. Unless... Unless I'm not the only overseer in Jinjo, right? <laughs> I have answered all your questions with full honesty. I don't mind you knowing because it won't make any difference. You can try to stop us with all you have, but it's too late to change the course of history. Now, I have one question for you. You seem convinced we caused the disappearance of Jue. What if I told you there was more to it? Would you be curious? About Jue. What else do you know? Come closer and I'll tell you, Madam Magistrate. It's a secret for your ears only. How dare you! Madam Magistrate, I do... No. It can't be. Shocked, aren't you? But there's more. What if I told you your sentinel had made this prophecy a long, long time ago? Your all-seeing sentinel abandons you now of all times. Need I say more? We're merely adding a touch of extra fuel to the fire that will soon consume all. Rover, care for a wager? I know you've been searching for answers about your past, and I've got news for you. Watch out! 
You are one of us, the Black Lambs, and you have been chosen to join us, ushering in the new world. Once you discover what you really are, you will come to us with no hesitation. The Fraxidus awaits your arrival with open arms, and I look forward to that day in sincere anticipation. <laughs> Sorry, Rover. What he mentioned about our Sentinel is... highly sensitive. I cannot disclose it yet. Not before verifying it myself. Is it a ploy to create distrust among us? Or... <sighs> I must first find our Sentinel to uncover the truth. Jue is the Guardian Sentinel of Jin Zhou. It is responsible for assisting Jin Zhou's Magistrate in administrative affairs. While I am the final decision maker, without the assistance of Jue, I cannot guarantee I am always making the best choices for my people. Jue can predict the future, and up to this point, every one of its prophecies have been proven true. While justice may not be universally agreed upon, its decisions have consistently served the best interests of Huang Long. For that, I suppose we will have to talk to it in person to find out. In addition, Rover, Jue once told me to deliver a message to you, to the Awakened One. When raindrops fall upstream, please head to the North Fall Barrens and seek General Jian of the Midnight Rangers. I suppose so. General Jian is currently battling another TD outbreak in the Norfall Barrens, which will also serve as our front line against the Thronodian. But the ongoing war has made it a very dangerous place to go. Since you won't need to go there right now, not until when the raindrops fall upstream, I know you're here for clues about your true identity. And I don't want you to leave the city empty-handed. Have you heard about the Black Shores, Rover? It's an organization shrouded in mystery, with a secretive membership process and members who usually keep their identities hidden. Upon your awakening, one of their members discreetly contacted me to gather information about you. But please don't worry. The Black Shores developed a special lament prediction system and has established partnerships with countries worldwide. While operating in secrecy, they are not an extremist group, like the Fraxidus. They have been monitoring the situation in Jinjo to provide assistance when needed. Thanks to their extra help, my meeting with you went smoothly. This Blake Bloom is their symbol. The Black Shores members usually wear it on their person. Rover, after the recent series of events, I trust you have gained a general idea of who you might have been. Before you fell into that deep slumber, you likely played a significant role in important historical events, shaping the course of history in some way. Ultimately, I suppose it is up to you to discover the final definitive answer for yourself. This photo is yours to keep. I will return with Jue shortly and the Black Shores may be worth your try during this time. Rover, are you all right? I see. The Black Shores must have a deep connection to your past. Since you are likely being closely monitored by the Fraxidus now, 
I suggest keeping an eye out for the Black Shore members. They could prove to be your valuable allies. I'll do my best to find Jue, and tell you everything I learned from it once I return. This is my promise. Yes, please leave it to me. Sanhua. Yes, Madam Magistrate. I will be going on a temporary leave. During my absence, please help me handle my responsibilities in Jinzhou. Understood. Should I continue protecting that rover? No need. Both Chan Li and I will be away, and there will be more than enough paperwork for you to handle. Is Lady Chong Li leaving for the capital? Please pardon my intrusion, but he just faced an ambush in the Central Plains. What if... Regarding that incident, we tried to warn him about the Fraxidus, but they were more cunning than we thought. If he runs into another powerful enemy like Scar, he'll eventually have to confront them on his own. Sanhua, you can place more trust in Rover and me. Understood. I will. My lady, no matter what happens, my sword is always yours. Interrogation and my appointed meeting with Rover have already finished. Scar only needed the two of you as his audience. We already knew what he wanted, and we let him have as much. He decrypted every message we intended to convey. It's only proper you meet him in person, as the one who crafted those puzzles. Such intricate puzzles... I guess only Rover has the patience to solve them all. No detail is too small. I'm sure he understands. Besides, not seeing the opponent heightens the thrill of the game. If everything goes according to the prophecies of Jue, I will meet him in person eventually. So, what did our captive from the Fraxidus tell you about Jue? that Jue had predicted I will have to fight it one day. A fight that will shape Jinjo's future. Well, that is... unexpected. But you don't seem all that surprised, do you? Can't say I am. I had suspected as much from our previous conversations, and the message it left me... His words only confirmed it. Where was it when you last sensed its presence? It was... in Mount Firmament. Unlike Jinjo City, that mountain is still resting in stillness. The place where the first people of Jinjo lived, and where Jue first manifested before us humans. I see. I'll find Jue and bring it back as soon as possible. Our enemies could have planned it as a trap. We have a bigger goal to focus on, remember? I understand. I will not let anything or anyone disrupt the peace in Jinjo. Would you let what you heard from Scar sway your determination? No. He cannot ever turn me against Chue. If anything, his words only confirmed my theory. I am the Magistrate of Jinjo, appointed by the Sentinel itself. The prophecy speaks of a decisive incident for Jinjo's future. 
where I will be a key player. The fight between me and Jue is only a precursor. My job remains unchanged. I will fulfill my duty as Jinjo's magistrate with my own judgment. Is that your final answer? A single strand's neglect births mountainous upheaval. You taught me that, remember? The safest option is for me to go in person. Very well. Since we are already mid-game, I will let you decide our next move. This time, I shall be a pawn in your hand. Remember, I will always stand by your side, in this crisis or any other. Am I a player or a mere pawn? I suppose there is no difference at this point. No matter what, I will do what I must. <laughs>